Now let's go ahead and talk about image masks with CSS. Image masks in CSS allow you to create interesting effects by using an image as a mask to define which parts of another element should be visible or hidden. The mask image itself is not visible, but it affects the visibility of the elements that it's applied to. Let's take a look at how we can use image masks in a project. Here's what my starting page looks like. And here is my current HTML. This page is pretty simple. I have a header with a class of hero. It contains an H1 and an image. And this is the image that we're seeing that's on the page. I've applied a class of hero pick to this image. The rest of the content is extra page content and we'll be using this a little bit later in our example. To begin with, we're gonna go into the CSS. Here's my beginning CSS. I have a universal selector, some basic rules for my body, padding and margin on main. I have a rule that makes my image be responsive. And then I have some general rules on my hero H1. And this is just setting the color, the font size, line height, line weight, and text transform of uppercase. We'll be building out this page together using CSS in order to create some really interesting types of masks. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make my title and my image appear side by side. We'll go ahead and do this by applying some rules on header. We'll go ahead and do this by applying some basic rules on header. For this, I'm going to use a display of Flexbox. We'll set the gap to one rem, padding to three rems, and then I'm going to go ahead and use a width property of 65%. If we save and refresh, you will see that my heading and my image are now going to appear side by side. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill the text with this image. Now we had looked at how to do this in a previous exercise, so I'm not gonna go through this specifically since I've already covered it. If you wanna learn how to do this, I suggest you watch my video on using background clip. I'll go ahead and add these rules to my hero H1. Now when we go ahead and save and refresh, you can see that the text is displaying with the same image. And that's a result of these additional rules that I just added to my Hero H1. Now what we'll work on is creating a mask on this particular image. I'll go ahead and I'll make a selector for Hero Pick, which is the class name that I've assigned to this particular image. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a linear gradient mask to the image. Sometimes you might just want to have an image appear as opaque and fade out or vice versa. You can easily do this by using the mask image property. We'll go ahead and we'll make a selector for mask image. I'm going to go ahead and assign a linear gradient. And for right now, we'll go ahead and just make our gradient go from black to transparent. Now, because this property is not fully supported yet, we're going to need to include a vendor prefix for Chrome. Firefox does support this feature without a vendor prefix, but Chrome still needs our vendor prefix. So for now, we'll go ahead and add that. Now, if I save my page and I refresh, you're going to see that this linear gradient has been applied to my image. Currently, I'm just setting this to be black to transparent. If you want to have more control over the gradient, you can go ahead and plug in unique values as well as creating color stops. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key, and I'm currently using VS Code. Then I can go ahead and edit both of these fields simultaneously. So I'll get rid of what we wrote before. I'm going to drop down to the next line just to make this a little bit easier to see and I will need to touch this up in my second rule if I want it to line up under linear gradient, but that's not going to affect how this works at all. We'll go ahead and we'll use the RGB values, and I'm going to set this to a black color, which is 000, and then I wanna be able to augment transparency. We could use RGBA, but in addition to using RGBA, you can simply use RGB, set your RGB values, use a forward slash, and then pass in the value that you want for the alpha or the opaqueness. So my first instance of my gradient is gonna be a completely black color. Now we'll go ahead and we'll add our next color. 
Again, I'm going to use RGB and we'll make this black. This time though, I'm going to set the opacity to 50%. So I'll use 0.5 after the forward slash. In addition to this, I'm also going to plug in 30%. This will force this color stop to occur 30% down within our gradient. In this way, you can really dial in your gradients and have them appear exactly how you want. For this final color on our gradient, I'm going to set the color to zero, which basically is going to make it transparent. I'll just indent this final little bit of code just to keep this nice and neat. And if we save now and refresh, you're going to see that it still looks similar, but the gradient has transformed. As we adjust this value, so if I change this to 80%, you're going to see that the gradient transition is going to now occur near the bottom part. If we want this to occur sooner, which I do, I'm going to leave this at 30%, and you can see that the transition is going to happen sooner. In this way, you can mask out any image and have it fade out if that's what you'd like to do. Now that you know how to do this, we're going to move on and we're actually going to be using an image as a mask instead of a gradient. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just comment out these two lines of code since I don't need to use them anymore. If I left them there, it wouldn't really matter because we're going to be using the same property and it would just get overwritten. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the mask image property, but this time we're going to go ahead and we're going to pass in the URL for an image that we want to use. The syntax for this is exactly the same as if you were setting a background image using CSS. So it probably looks very familiar to you if you've used this kind of code in the past. I'm going to go ahead and set this to a whale shark.svg image. Then what I'll do is I'll simply copy this and I'll add the vendor prefix for WebKit. Now if we save and we refresh, you're going to notice that everything disappears. In order for you to be able to preview using an image as a mask, you need to actually use a hosted version of your web page or use a live server. This will not work if you just preview your page as we've been doing. I'm currently using VS Code. And VS Code has a live preview extension. If you have this installed, you'll see a go live button in the lower right hand portion of your page. If you don't see that, you'll need to install the extension. You can go to Code, Preferences, Extensions, and I believe to access extensions on a PC is under the File menu. Once you're in your extensions, you can search for live server. So I already have live server installed, which allows me to use this particular feature. I'm going to go ahead and click go live. And what's going to happen is it's going to load a separate URL. Once this has been done, you should see your image being used as a mask within your page. Now, currently I have some little weirdness down here at the bottom, and that is actually the repeating portion of this image. Just like background images, when you use an image mask, they will repeat as well. So we can control the way that the mask looks by using some additional properties. And because I'm using this live preview mode, as soon as I make the changes and save them, we can see them updating on our page. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a mask size. We're going to set our mask size to contain. Just like we did before, we're going to need to add our vendor prefix. So I'll go ahead and add that now and then paste this in. If we save, we're not going to see any change quite yet. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the mask repeat property. We're going to set this to no repeat. Once again, I'll copy this and I'll add my vendor prefix. And you can see when I save my file, the little extra bit of image element is going to disappear. The other property that we can add when we're using masks is the mask position property. I'll go ahead and set my mask position to bottom right. Once again, I'm going to make a vendor prefix. And if we save, you probably aren't going to see much of a difference here. But if we alter these values to top left and we save, you should see that there's a slight difference in how the mask is going to appear within the image. 
This will be more apparent on our next exercise, but I did want to introduce you to the various properties that we have when we're working with masks. The mask image property specifies the image to be used in the mask. We need to ensure that we're using the vendor prefix of dash webkit dash so that this will work in Chrome and other older browsers. When you choose an image to use as a mask, you want to choose an image that is grayscale with black areas indicating parts of the element that should be hidden and white areas indicating parts of the element that should be visible. You can also include shades of gray to create partial transparency. Here's what my whale shark image looks like. And this image is using all black. The white areas that we see right here are actually transparent. And this file is an SVG file. So it's scalable and it's always going to look great. Now let's go ahead and let's use this technique one more time to create another masked image for this page. The first thing I'm going to do is come back to my HTML and I'm going to add an additional HTML element. We're going to come into the main section and before we have any of our text, we're going to add an image to our web page. I'll save my page and you can see that right away the browser is going to be updated. This is another advantage of using the live preview. It will automatically update your page as soon as you make any changes and have saved the page. Now that we have this image here, I'm going to go back into my CSS. We'll make a new rule and we're going to target that image. So I'll use main image. And the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a float on the left. Then I'll add some padding on the right. Because this image is currently taking up the entire width that is available, we don't see the text wrapping. So I'm going to go ahead and give this image a max width of 300 pixels. If we save now, you can see that the text is going to appear on the right, the image appears on the left. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use mask image to be able to fill this area with an actual image. We'll use the same code that we used before. I'll use mask image. Once again, I'm going to use URL and then we'll go ahead and navigate to the image that we want to display. I'll be using an SVG once again. And now that I have this here, I'm going to copy this. I'll add my vendor prefix. And if we save now, you can see that the rectangular image has been replaced with this breaching whale image. I like this image. You can see that it is repeating down here. This is the start of the tip of the whale nose. So again, I'm going to use my mask repeat, no repeat. And I'll just copy these other properties because I want to use them as well. So we'll add our mask size contain, our mask repeat none, and mask position top and left. So this is looking pretty good, but ideally I would like the fins of the whale to be on the left and this side of the whale to appear on the right. In order to do this without editing my image and re-saving it, I'm just going to use the transform property and I'm going to go ahead and use my scale X, which may sound a little intuitive, but if we use scale X and pass in a negative one, Watch what happens when I save. You can see that the image has now been flipped as if it was spinning around its horizontal axis. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to make the text follow the edge of this image a little bit. You can see that this does work, but the edge of the text is very squared off. I think that this would look better if it just came in a little bit and followed the contours of my image. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to do this, we're going to use the shape outside property. The shape outside property is used to define the shape of an element's float area, which is the area around the element that is affected by other float elements. When we use the shape outside property, we can create a non-rectangular float area for an element. This is really useful for creating interesting layouts of text wrapping around irregularly shaped images or objects. I'm going to go ahead and pass in the URL property, and I have prepared an image to use for my shape outside. It basically is the same image, but I've blacked out this edge. 
If we go ahead and pass in one of the default values, not much of a change is going to happen. We could use circle and pass in 50%, but we don't have much control in regards to making the text follow the contours of our whale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use an image that I've prepared for this particular example. I'll show you what the image looks like in just a minute. I'm going to use the URL property and then we'll just go ahead and navigate to the appropriate image. If we save now, you can see that the text is following the image instead of using a more rectangular type of shape. Now currently the text is very close to the image. When we use shape outside, padding does not affect it. But if we change this padding to margin and save, you can see that we start to get some additional spacing. Now, in order to actually make this work, let me show you the image and then we'll actually adjust this so that it works a little bit better. The image that I'm using for the whale is this image right here. Again, this is an SVG, it's a black image, and the white areas that we see are actually transparent. In regards to the mask, this is the exact same image. I did, however, flip the image. So if we look at these two images side by side, you will see that this part of the image on the right side is actually what corresponds with the left side of the original image. The rest of this is all black, so the areas where we have the fins of the whale are completely black. The reason that I needed to do this is because if we simply used the exact same image and didn't create the mask, let me show you what happens to our page. It does work, but the text is going to now appear behind the image. That's not what I want. So I'll set this back to my mask image, which gives me something like this. Even though the mask has not been flipped, because we're using the transform property, the mask is actually being flipped as well. So knowing that, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can switch this to the padding on the left. I know this seems a little counterintuitive, but because we're transforming the image, we need to think in the opposite way for our padding as well. You can see that now when we add padding on the left, we get spacing that looks much better in regards to our page. So now you can see how I've created this particular layout. It is worth mentioning that this is entirely responsive, so it does work just like any other layout would. This is a really great way that you can create really exciting and beautiful web pages by using all sorts of different shapes as masks. Just keep in mind that when you do use the masks, you need to use grayscale images that are primarily black and white, or if you wanted areas of partial transparency, you could use gray. I hope you found this helpful, and I can't wait to see what you're able to build using these features on your web pages.